What's going on, smart people? I'm talking a lot about the qualifying exam that I have to take in just under three weeks, and that's going to determine whether or not I can continue to do something I actually haven't even started yet, which is be a PhD student. But assuming everything goes well with that, that's still not the end of the road. There's still what's called the comprehensive exam that I will eventually have to take. I'm going to be going over that, really the format and structure of that today, because I needed an idea for today's video. So let's just let's just jump right into it. Uh, PhD comprehensive exam. I've already skimmed through this, but I'm still gonna read it as if I haven't read it before, just you know, so I'm not making anything up on the spot. Feel free to pause the video because some parts I might just skip because they're just kind of boring. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's just let's just get into it. The main purposes of the PhD comprehensive exam is to aid the faculty in judging a student's knowledge of core graduate material and ability to reason and express this knowledge. This is already different from the qualifying exam because the qualifying exam is pitched at the undergraduate level just to make sure you're prepared for grad school and this is testing you on the graduate courses that you will have taken. So that's already very very much more, more stressful. To require the student to review and become thoroughly familiar with all of the core graduate material at one time, so making sure you didn't forget anything, and to allow the student to organize and present research or plans for research, and to aid the faculty in making timely recommendations for the student concerning future course of study. So it's not just testing you on what you've learned, it's testing you or it wants to know your research plans, which is pretty different. Uh, format and content of the exam. It consists of a written part and an oral part. For students in the traditional physics program, the written part will consist of three separate exams of equal length. And these are actually on different days, which is nice. Uh, one on quantum mechanics, e and &M, and one split evenly between classical and stat mech. And then the rest is for different programs, which I'm not going to get into. So that's, that's pretty similar to the qualifying exam. Those are the same topics, just the exam is structured a bit differently. Each of the three examinations will require the student to work four problems in five hours. So that's longer than the qualifier. Qualifiers, three problems choose two to do in each subject. So this is four problems for the three parts, so 12 problems total, I guess 15 hour period over multiple days. Uh, choices will be given. Now I'm not quite sure what that means, choices will be given. I'm assuming it's similar to the qualifier and then in that like with the qualifying exam you'll be given three questions in each section from each choose two to do. It just doesn't explicitly state how many there are to choose from in this case. They may be original or from textbooks. That's helpful. The oral part will be administered by the, stu the, by the students committee the format of the oral exam will depend on whether the student receives a full pass or conditional pass of the written exam. So for the written exam, you can either get a yeah or a yeah, but. Um, I've also never taken an oral exam before in my life. I have no idea what to expect for that. And it's weird because later on you'll find out that it, the written exam is, is like a regular old test. It tests you on solving physics problems, but also somehow so is the oral exam. So feel free to enlighten me on what oral exams are like in the comment section. Uh, with a full pass, the student will be examined largely over physics concepts and the ability to solve physics problems. Go figure. In addition, the student is encouraged to give an oral presentation of the prior research and or thesis plan in a half hour period to support his or her admission as a PhD candidate. With a conditional pass, so that's the yeah, but, uh, the student must present additional evidence of qualification for a PhD candidate. This evidence may be in the form of prior research and or well-developed research plan. The student must submit a written material, written material to the committee supporting this evidence and the exam will be over this research, work as well over physics concepts and the ability to solve physics problems. Okay, it's kind of makes sense to me if you if you didn't quite pass the test you know, you still got to prove it. If you d p didn't quite pass the test, but you didn't quite fail it, maybe you can just give a little bit of more uh, reasoning as to why you should still be considered as a PhD candidate. When the student must take the examination, only students who have passed the qualifying exam at the doctoral level are qualified to take or eligible to take this comprehensive exam. So you're not even qualified to fail this exam unless you've, unless you've knocked this qualifying exam out of the park. Uh, each student who wishes to pursue the PhD degree must take the written part the first time it is offered after you've taken all of the core graduate courses. There's eight core courses total. There's two in e and two in quantum mechanics. There's a uh, computational physics exam or um, course. There is 
classical mechanics, statistical mechanics, and one that I'm forgetting. And after you pass all of those, math methods, if I didn't say that already, after you've taken all of those courses, which is about four semesters worth, then you can finally take this comprehensive exam. The written part may be taken earlier than this if the student so desires and the advisor agrees. Normally a full-time, nine credit semester grad student entering with a bachelor's in physics should take the written part for the first time during the fifth or sixth semester of studies or earlier. Yeah, so that makes perfect sense with me. I've already taken three of those eight courses now. I'll take another three next semester, and then I'll also have two semesters at E&M, which puts me on track to take that test in the fifth semester. A full-time student entering with a master's would normally take it during the third semester or earlier, okay? And you can't, you normally can't take it more than twice. An oral exam must be scheduled in the same semester that you pass the written exam. A student who receives a conditional pass in the written exam uh, on his or her first attempt and does not take the oral exam in the semester must retake the written exam in the following semester. Ugh. The student, however, may petition the faculty for postponing the oral exam to the following semester if you forfeit the chance of taking the written exam. Scheduling of the examination. The three written exams will be given on three days in the early fall spring with at least one day in, in between each. Yeah, so there's the three tests that you have to take, five hours each. You're not going to take a 15-hour test in one day, and there's at least one day in between each test. That's, that's very nice. The core subject matters to be covered will be announced approximately a week in advance. What you can bring, which is nothing <laughs> pretty much, uh, the oral part normally lasts two hours, can be shortened, and it's scheduled on an individual basis. Okay. Submission of grading of the problems in the Comprehensive Examination Committee. This just talks about the fact that the faculty will grade it individually. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory stuff. Uh, examination, or let me, let me go up here so that you can pause and read it if you would like. Okay, going down to examination scores and recommendations. Following the written part of the Comprehensive Exam, the Comprehensive Exam Committee will make one of the following recommendations to the faculty. You scored high enough to where you're, you're good, and you can take the oral part, which is this part, so it gets a 70% or greater, which is actually pretty good. Keep in mind, you might be taking this test, you might be tested on a subject that you haven't had in four semesters. So retaining 70% of the information of a graduate course you may have taken two years ago, I think that's, that's pretty solid. The student should be given a conditional pass if you score in between a 50% and a 70% which I think is pretty generous, to be honest. The student should take the examination again if you did not score at least a 50% on his or her first attempt. The student should discontinue studies without an oral exam if on your second attempt you score less than a 50%. I think that makes sense. Having said that, I have no idea how hard this test is going to be. Uh, so this is building off of the conditional pass. A student who receives a conditional pass of the written part should normally plan to retake it the next time it is offered However, the student may elect to take the oral examination if he or she feels that she is strong enough as evidence in his or her committee agrees. So if you get, it sounds like if you get the conditional pass and your, your case is strong enough, you might not have to take it again and you can just take the oral test and then call yourself a PhD student. I don't know, maybe it's more complicated than that. The student's oral examination committee may recommend that the student pass, fail, or adjoin the examination. In making its decision, the committee will consider all of the factors presented, including grades, scores, research, presentations, written papers, faculty opinions, and other relevant factors. Students will be given two chances to pass the oral exam, which is just like the qualifying exam. Possible termination of support, that just basically says if you fail twice, you're, you're out, probably. Uh, I, uh, hopefully E8 won't apply to me. Uh, that's it though, that is the comprehensive exam. In the future, I'm sure I will cover it much more in depth, but probably not for another few semesters, because especially in the near future, since I have the qualifying exam, that is much more near. Let me know in the comments section, what would you rather take? A graduate level test on the entire subject in classical mechanics, statistical mechanics, quantum, or ENM. I think personally probably quantum for me. Lucky for me though, I get to take all of them. Or actually, hopefully I get to take all of them. But let's focus on the qualifier now. But let me know in the comments section and I'll see you guys there.